All right, guys, good evening and welcome to uh, Matters of the Game on Elevated TV Radio. My name is Edafi Matthew. So you're going to love to call me the Elevated on the spot. Uh, straight away, we would uh, hit the ground running. I've got uh, a lot to talk about today, but uh, we would uh, start with an expert on the show tonight. And uh, that expert is one who really have got it in the game. I would uh, introduce him in a minute. I would uh, have to put a call through to him and uh, get him on the show in a minute. But before then, let me uh, also tell you guys that today we're going to be talking about data and statistics, the importance, the role of data and statistics. Whenever we look at the Nigerian league, for me, whenever I look at the league, I'm no longer asking, is there talent in the league? I'm not bothered about that anyway. I know that there is talent. Are the coaches good enough? I can't answer yes, 100%. But at the same time, I don't think that the coaches are also bad. I also think that there are a lot of factors that are working against them in the modern game that they don't have access to. And it's just like this job that we we'll do. Take away the internet. Some of us are not as good as people think we are. So there is a whole lot uh, of uh, things that are missing. Missing link in the component that makes a league a great league that is also missing. And again, uh, I had a conversation earlier in the day with... Uh, uh, someone, Mr. Nelson Ine from uh, GTI, and we're talking about in a whole lot of things. Okay, so I practically do pro bono consultation for the league. Like, okay, when I see that there's something not working well, I like, okay, in this area, you guys are not doing well. This could become a problem. It is not a problem right now, but it could be a problem down the line. Let me give you a very good example. Last season, I did the production of the league, and I pretty much enjoyed it and quick, quickly cashed on and improved on in terms of, when I look at what I did last season and uh, me and my team, what we did last season on that shoelace budget and what is going on right now, I'm forced to say to, to anybody who cared to listen that we did a, bet, a better job, a greater job than whoever is doing anything currently. But that's a different conversation. I just think that the league is missing a lot. And uh, those things are the things that at the end of the season will provide the money that the league needs. But they are not looking at it so i started talking about it and just that 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 caught fire that caught up a lot of interest and um uh, someone by the name of bello uh, also reached out got involved in the conversation and uh, along the line reached out and bello zach and he said some things that are very interesting that i like and i hope that he will be in the comment section to join in on the conversation but right now let me go straight away to uh, my guest on the show today has promised me that he was going to give me 15 minutes of his time. Would have been here on the show yesterday. Would have discussed this yesterday, but uh, uh, because he's got uh, <laughs> a busy commitment yesterday, it was his son's birthday. We had to move it up to today. And let me say this up front before you guys, before I get him on the show. He's a brilliant German. Uh, you know how we always say that Germans are the most efficient people in the world, uh, but we don't just say it as a cliche. This man is a brilliant German. He's trusted with the responsibility to create data and statistics for the German Bundesliga, but not just that, for separate teams and separate players. He's worked with players like Le Robert Lewandowski and the likes Thomas Muller, uh, Thiago Hernandez, a whole lot of them, Thiago Alcantaras, and also worked with a lot of clubs in the English Premier League and the Championship and some other clubs in other different European leagues. And that that's not me being a hype man for him. And I've also listened to him on different shows and I, I kind of like say we are missing this guy. And not just the fact that he's brilliant. He's got a team and he's got a company called Resort Sport. You can search them out on the net. Uh, you can, you know, follow them on Twitter at Resort Sports and you would understand what I'm saying. If you want to follow him on Twitter, his name is Mario Liu, at Mario Liu. Okay, M-A-R-I-O-L-E-O. -E he's such a brilliant guy. And then again, he's a lover of African football. There's just that energy and pump. And when I was having this conversation this morning with uh, uh, the guys at GT and the LMC guys, I was just telling them that, look, in this guy, and again, there's another Nigerian uh, uh, Kinney score, guys. We could really use data to make money. So let me, before I bring Mario Liu in, let me read something. So I saw this article on um, LinkedIn uh, by... Suleiman Shoaib, and uh, he, he got me fascinated, and I started digging, I started searching. And this is one little thing that I need to, to bring in before I introduce Mario Leo. Using data analytics, clubs can make more informed decisions, ensuring they get value for money. For example, rather than splurging on a big-name star, a club might use analytics to identify a lesser-known player with similar attributes at a fraction of the cost. Now, that's one. Then the article, the article by... Uh, the, the guy on LinkedIn, Shoaib, 
Suleiman is a very long article. He say data. The, the headline is data analytics in football: the game changing revolution in soccer. And I think it's something you should read. It's on the the comment section of this live. Uh, you could read it, but it's not a complete article. So I put his name there so you can search out his name on LinkedIn and go and see what is written there. He said soccer or football often referred to as the beautiful game has always been a blend of an of art and science. The data analytic revolution, however, has uh, tipped the skills in favor of the latter in recent years. Gone are the days when decisions were solely based on intuition or what met their eyes. Today, every pass, every tackle, every run, whether on or off the ball, are quant quantified, analyzed, and dissected to extract maximum value. Now, the, the whole article is very long, but I've got somebody who is in this business and uh, is a guy that I would get in to talk to me about it. Mario, uh, if you're there, I'm uh, ready to get you uh, on the conversation. He's, he's muted right now, but uh, I think I'll get, I'll go back. I'll circle back to it. Okay, he's available now. Hello, Mario. Good mo Good evening. Hey, that's a very good evening. Great, how, great, how, honor, great honor for me to be on the show. Okay, so sorry. I needed to lay the foundation for the show before I bring you in. I'm sorry for that three minutes that have uh, elapsed, but I need us to talk today. Bello Zach is also here. So he's one person who's also joined the conversation and have an idea of what we're going to talk about today. This is not the day where we banter or just get excited on the show, but this is a moment for us to be educated. And I'm going to hit the ground running straight away. For the new people, some of some of the guys here already know who Mario Leo is. But for the new people, let me say this. Uh, Mario, please introduce yourself for, for the audience to, to get to know you. And it's good to see you on the comment section of the video, of the live as well. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> well, thanks. It's uh, Like I said, it's a great, great honor and great pleasure to be on the show tonight. So my name is Mario Leo. I'm uh, 52 years of age, uh, founded Result Sports in 2008. Um, built an in-house crawler uh, focusing on, on digital evolution in sports in 2010 and working with data for the past 14 years. Um, predominantly on, on the fan community side, so we're collecting um, to, um, social media following community evolution across 28 social media platforms, um, assisting clubs, leagues, federations and athletes on, on this evolution, on improving content uh, to the audiences, uh, focusing on engagement, building communities, um, relationship management, and obviously also obviously see then obviously the goal line impact or the scores impact to this. Um, besides that, obviously we've, we've built um, social media communities for players, uh, most namely um, Antonio Rüdiger, Ilkay Gündogan, uh, Mesut Özil, where we, where we we were responsible for the social media profiles of the millions um, from 2011 to 2015. So working in sports, fully dedicated to sports for the past 14, 15 years, um, assisting at the moment about 100 sports organizations um, on the right usage of data. Um, that's from the sporting department, yeah, from the scouting, which you obviously led into in, into the start of the conversation, but also on the back end for, for building fan relationship and, and fan tools, because obviously that's one significant lack of, of the NPFL. For example, in the NPFL clubs, they distribute content, but they don't build relationships. So that's the key thing uh, and, the key, and something we discuss shortly. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, shortly before we go deep into this, let me let me wave off away from that. Uh, there are three candidates that have been shortlisted for the uh, Bayern Munich job, just in case uh, Thomas Tuchel is fired at the end of the season. Top on the on the on the on the cherry pie of that list is uh, Javi Alonso. Javi Alonso is a man whose father was formerly a coach, a former player that didn't do too well, became a coach, and then he played under uh, Jose Mourinho, Pep Guardiola, Rafael Benitez, and Carlo Ancelotti. And we see the good work he's doing. How much of the work that Javi Alonso is doing at Bayer Leverkusen is attributed to data? Because you're in Germany, you should know and uh, know how this thing works. How much, how much of that is? about data or pr maybe purely just coaching instinct and luck? No, I mean, nobody works anymore based on, on luck, Edafa. Um, I mean, it's we are, we are inside a, a digital revolution, not an evolution, but really a revolution. Um, Bundesliga teams use software tools like Wisecout and, and many others. Um, and, and have thousands of players on their radar, radar stream where obviously not only the physical attributes, yeah, the statistics, 
um, uh, are playing part, but also the personal attributes. Yeah, how does how is the player's mindset? How does the player uh, react to defeat or, or, or losses? Um, is he is he a team player or is he more egoistic? So there's, so there's many many touch points, uh, and obviously when you look into the strategic sort of uh, team building, um, Bayer 04 Leverkusen lacked the leader in midfield. Um, Granny Chaka was unhappy in, in, in London at Arsenal and, and he was obviously the, the, the right fit. Um, Victor Boniface yeah, was, was meant to be a backup um, for, for the assisting Patrick Schick um, because obviously he's been seen one of the biggest European talents. Um, and Victor Boniface um, impressed yeah, in, in pre-season tremendously that he suddenly yeah, swapped, swapped rankings and then he became the player. So obviously the, the foundation of all this team building, team evolution is, is based on data. Um, and, and, and basically every Bundesliga team kind of uh, scouts their players, and which, which obviously also has a kind of not a negative but obviously a realistic impact that somebody who is in the youth academy playing on the under 17th and under 19th might have significantly less chances to to move up to the first team because obviously if if they find somebody on on their database from africa from south america and bring him on obviously an established player with with experiences that that obviously stops obviously the the, the youth evolution so um, you just have to be you, the, the core. The core principle is you shouldn't make data too scientific. You should use relevant data, pragmatic data, and really implement that um, into your overall strategy, and, and then build something out of that. Yeah, it's still we still have the human factor into that, but data is, is one key driver. All right. So most of the times when you talk to people, especially in this part of the world, I've spoken to uh, guys in Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, Ghana. One, and uh, most especially in Nigeria, one of the keyest thing they ask you is, uh, okay, Daffy, you're always talking about let's move to data, let's move to data. How does data give me money? How does data put money in the hands of the clubs? How does it make them make money? And 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 also the league organizers, okay, Daffy, yes, you want us to talk about data, you want us to talk about number of key passes made to the left or to the right or forward or backward, you know, the players' at it, attributes, which, which leg is stronger than the rest. How does that convert to Naira and Kobo dollars and pounds or euros or Dutch mark or whatever the money is in the bank account? Now, you are a man who's got 14 years experience. If it's an educational stuff, you'll be having a PhD in this one. So I need you to tell me examples of how data have uh, converted to good money for some leagues and clubs and individual players and how that can help a Nigerian club or a Nigerian player or the league itself. Well, I mean, we, we probably need to first distinguish yeah, where, where, where we want to use the data. So, obviously, if we look into the sporting department, yeah, the NPFL is, is, is one of, one of the, the leading or, let's say, the, one of the top eight football leagues in, in Africa. Yeah. Um, and, obviously, there, there are many neighboring countries uh, and players in neighboring countries who, who wish to play in, in the NPFL. Um, and, and obviously, when, when you then look into, into your database and you have a striker uh, playing for your competitor and he wants um, to transfer, he wants a 400,000 US dollar salary as an example, yeah, and then you, you scout or, or you basically scout a, a player from, from Guinea um, and he only wants um, 80,000 um, for, for, for this role. Obviously, you see that, that, that this data obviously it makes, makes the money or the spending and the risk of spending obviously significantly lower. Um, when you, when you want to attract sponsors, um, obviously sponsors want to know uh, where's the audience. Uh, what, what audience do you have on, on social media? What, or how, how likely is this audience going to buy my product? Yeah, if you don't have any data about your personas, yeah, if you know that, if you don't know where they're located, what age group they are, what gender they are, then obviously you're going very blind into the conversations with a sponsor. And then the only thing you can promise him is, is sporting success. But, but that's what all the other. Um, teams in the league will also promise their yeah, sporting success. So, so where's your unique value proposition in, in your offering? Um, and, and that's from the market. And obviously the same is obviously from the communication side. If you want to 
reach young audiences and you don't know the platforms where the young audience is, um, is active on, um, then obviously you will, you will never reach the, day, the, the, the young audience. So um, data is, is at every single Every every single intersection or at every every department is becoming more and more very very critical. All right, so there is a there is a a few uh, side to this also. So let's talk about the individual players, man. I saw what you did with Mesut Ozil; it was incredible. Probably the first thing that attracted me to your work was how the the, the Mesut Ozil website was created. Every time he plays a game, you see the the website kind of like if from the from the interface coming out from the front of it. You think the thing is just automatically updating itself. But obviously, it meant that your team was working crazily on it. And the number of assists, the number of goals, the number of key passes, movement on the field and everything just appears. So, let me highlight a player in the Nigerian League. Let's say Sekiru Alimi wants to be seen, wants to be visible, wants to be known all over the world. What type of package, what type of work will you do to make a Sekiru Alimi a lot more seen globally than his contemporaries in the MPFL. Well, it's it's basically first first we're gonna have conversations with the player what he wants to achieve because everything on on his social media activities needs to be very authentic. Um, that uh, there shouldn't be let's say a, a a script or an editorial plan which is visible that the the fans um, of the player think or imagine that this is done by by somebody external. Um, but but obviously the, the player should focus on on his practice, on his training, on his on his sporting success, um, and he needs in, around him trusted people who who do where, who do that where, where they are good in. And obviously we we believe we've been very very good and strong in in the marketing and communication world um, and building building players profiles um, and and visibility. Um, and that's obviously one one thing in in Africa is obviously the the huge amount of fake pages, fake profiles, uh, which which are around there. So so the fans and the audiences never know is this actually the real person. So obviously one one thing we would we would do is obviously get the player the blue tick, make sure that obviously he sees the one and only, um, then identify other pages you know, which which kind of. Um, just just use uh, the players, but but obviously infringe against uh, his his uh, picture rights and his image rights and his his um, video rights or moving picture rights, and obviously make sure that these pages are being deleted. That at the end of the day, only only the original player is left, and, and every fan in Africa and every fan outside Africa um, has the chance to sort of um, be part of his journey. And that journey is not only sporting. Um, journey, but but also obviously he's a role model, or they are role models. Uh, many youngsters, many teenagers want to become as successful as the players are. And obviously, therefore, he's got to share a little bit um, of his private life. He's got to share a little bit of his um, of his of his exercise and the commitment to the sport and the commitment to professionalism. Um, and then obviously, then then he has the chance to be that idol. People look up to it. People, people cherish and, and people cheer for. So, so that's something this which is very, very critical. And obviously, when you see, yeah, the, the super eagles um, coming coming from Europe, they all have their established profiles. They have agencies working on their social profiles. But the NPFL players, they don't have that visibility. And, and maybe even national team coach doesn't know that, that these players do exist and, and what personnel these players are. Because obviously. Social media profiles today are also like like the like a CV of, of a player. So and and and, and many many people and, and many coaches see the the attitude of the player based on his social media presence. Therefore, yeah, so that has to be very very professional as the player is. All right. Uh, I, honestly, I promised you that I was going to have you for fifteen minutes, and I know that it's pretty late, but uh, it's a late late show for me and. Uh, I'm going to let you go, Mario. But uh, before I let you go, uh, Germany won the World Cup in 1990. Also won it in 2014. But in 1990, something changed in German football, and they also they were part of the first nations to get involved in this whole data and all that the revolution of data. Now I want to know how impactful have data been in terms of generating money wealth for the german bundesliga and also for the german national team that should be the last one and then i'll let you go well, 
you just need to look into the the German Football Federation website. So if you if you scroll down um, to a specific areas and, and look at the membership sections, you will see that there is at the moment for the 2023-2024 season uh, 25,354 registered grassroots and amateur teams. Wow! So the German Football Federation knows exactly how many amateur teams are playing in Germany. And from these amateur teams, they register how many senior or adult players are playing and how many youngsters and, 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 and youth talents are playing in the team. Um, for every match day, like my 12-year-old, he played an indoor uh, competition today. Um, he won one game, he drew one game, he lost two games. And, and the German Football Federation has all the score lines and all the scorers. So they saw that my son, my 12-year-old, scored a goal today. And obviously, then all the people can, can see um, that, that these these players are there, and he's twelve. And obviously, they start their, their data collection with the age of six or seven. So you see, today you don't get you don't get into professional football in Europe if you are not detected by a scout with the age of eleven or twelve. There's no way you very very limited pathway, uh, and only like a handful of players in the Bundesliga who's not been. Uh, minimum seven years in, in a very professional academy, they are being trained to become a football star. Because you, if you are 14, 16, 17, and you believe you still make a professional career, I'm really sorry to disappoint you, but this is not going to happen in Europe. Because, um, we, we need to know in Nigeria how many six year old, eight year olds play in the townships, yeah, play, play football. We need to register it, we need to have a, a data mining activity. Because that's the, 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 the Nigerian Football Federation, of course, should focus on their flagships, you know, like um, the, the the ladies, you know, the, the men's first teams, those are the flagships, those are the highlights. But when you see that 99% of, of your flagship product, your national teams, play abroad, come come from abroad, be abroad, you would need to see it's like, okay, wow, yeah, this is like an expenses for me to bring them in for every national team play. This costs like a million euro for every national team, um, and and obviously when when you don't know how many of, of this talented six year old, eight year old, ten year old, you need to you need to have your scouts out there. You need to have the regional federations delivering data to the central Nigerian Football Federation, um, and 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 then obviously create like scouting camps to develop them. Why is there uh, why there are Real Madrid football camps? Yeah, why are there Olympic Marseille football camps in Nigeria? There should be Nigerian football federation camps yeah, to develop homegrown talent to 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 strengthen yeah, the Nigerian football, and, and that only can start with data mining. We need we need the small grassroots teams yeah, to develop to register their players with the with the Nigerian football federation. We need to know how many of them are, are very talented and then bring them into a centralized academy, a homegrown talent. And, and obviously, politicians yeah, and, and uh, municipalities will be very, very happy yeah, to, to say, this is my player from Uyo, this is my player from Port Harcourt, this is my player from Lagos. Yeah, they now represent the Super Eagles, they now represent uh, our Super Falcons. Yeah, and, and, and that's something that gives the, the broader public of Nigeria, a much bigger identity with local football, yeah, because you see, all the Nigerians love football, but how many of the Nigerians love local football? Yeah, There's a handful of them. Yeah, Everybody follows the Premier League, everybody follows La Liga, everybody follows the Bundesliga. No, we need to have local, local talent, local idols to give the identity back to Nigerian football, because Nigerian football is fantastic. There's tremendous talent. In the end, we need just to step it. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mario. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I need to be. I like to be seen as a man of my word. I also don't want to trick you, so that next time when I call you, you, you are happy to come in. And thank you very much for everything you've shared on the show tonight. We will definitely have you again. Like I said, it's a continuous conversation. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be done once and then it's over. We'll build on this the next time we have you on the show again. But thank you very much. And once again, happy belated birthday to your 12 year old son and congratulations on the games that he played and the goal that he scored today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for making this great pleasure. All right, bye. You know, so that's uh, Mario Liu. Uh, you can search him out, and he's done a whole lot of work. I know that towards the end, his voice was uh, fading out. Um, I mean, 
when 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 i told him earlier yesterday that we're going to have this conversation and i said to him that i run the risk of having only five people on the show because when people see those kind of headline it's not catchy it's not showing what will make them come and banter people don't like it so i'm not surprised that we have 12 people on the show kind of like i know my audience and i know what they're like well if you if you spend that much time where i used to work where we have to think about topic and consider the audience that we have and sometimes the topic you in the studio know that come on this topic is very very stupid it's not it doesn't make sense anyway but this is what you know that the audience will jump at and then because the audience will react to it let's do it so sometimes you know like what we go by uh, uh what's it called Alex sanchez is better than like messi and cristiano ronaldo come on i mean who, who are you really fully but that's the kind of thing that will make people react but sometimes we really need to learn because if we're going to build a country that we we fall in love with a country that we want to be part of then we must learn uh tiddy jackson in his book reposition yourself said if people know better they will do better but uh, if people don't know better conversely we would do better. I I'm still going to come to the comment section, but uh, there were a lot of MPFA games today. So let me go straight to one guy that I've got mad love and respect for. He's grown in leaps and bounds. He's become, for me, God's eyes on the Nigerian Pro Pro Premier Football League. It's a guy who's walk the talk. You know, sometimes, like I say, talk is cheap. And sometimes if you follow my Twitter, I will say that, a lot of people will come and tell you, I can do this, I can do that. And then you give them a chance to do something and it's terrible. But Felix the Great, or uh, let me call him the way I like to call him, call him Felix Namdi Egbomoche, or Felix the Great, has shown that you can fall in love with the Nigerian League, give it your all, and get to know it. So uh, today, he, he comes on and he reports for us the match, uh, the uh, event, what happened today and how he sees it. So, Felix, it is over to you. 14 goals scored, 6 victories and 3 draws. Match day 21 of the Nigerian Premier Football League promised so much excitement but delivered surprises. Enugu Rangers kicked off the weekend with a record-breaking win in Gombe, where they handed Doma United their first home defeat in the top flight. And that was how the game week was wrapped up with Baisa United picking up a crucial victory in Eket. In between those away wins, cast John to the next round of the Calf Heartland by a goal to Nave and play to United, picking up a crucial victory in Eket. In between those away wins, Castina United, aim band shooting stars, and hard fought points against Squire United, Bendel Insurance, and play to United. The draw in Joss was the first time Play 2 United had failed to grab maximum points playing at home, which means every team have now dropped points at home this season. Talking about home form, Luby Stars made the advantage count as they pipped Heartland by a goal to nail at their adopted home in Lafia to go top of the NPFL table with Remo Stars not in action this week. Niger Tornadoes also edged the Abia Warriors in a keenly contested affair in Kaduna while Gombe United humbled Sporting Lagos in the relegation matchup between both sides. The biggest winners this week were Kanu Pilas, who scored five goals for the second time this season, equaling the joint biggest winning margin of the season with their 5-1 morning of Sunshine Stars in Kanu. On the continent, Rivers United did their chances of qualification to the next round of the CAF Confederations Cup a massive boost as they held on to win 3-2 against Academica in Angola. That result means that they now have their destiny in their own hands and will qualify for the knockout stages with a big win against Dreams FC in their final group game. In all, it was a fairly quiet week except in Benin, where Monde Odige brought out his regular box of tantrums against the media. The insurance gaffer has now blamed everyone except himself for his team's poor showing. We wait to see who he fought next when his team performs badly again. Felix Namde Gomuche reporting for Elegbeted TV Radio. Thank you very much. I kind of like, so there is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all of for energy. And that's why I gravitate towards people who always show up that energy. I'm not the, you know, laid back, like a Desi Kalis affair kind of guy. So people like this would always be on my team. And sometimes we're like, oh, how then did you work with Emmanuel A team and Emmanuel Sebastian? Those guys have got energy, but you just don't, don't see it. But I mean, thank you very much, Namdi, uh, Felix the Great. Uh, fantastic update there. And thank you, Marilio, once again uh, for coming up on the co comment section to appreciate us. And for uh, the guy who said that it's good to know that this guy, OK Bukashan, repairs that he knows Nigerian football. Listen, Mario, I've been following Nigerian football for as long as I can remember. And every time we get into a conversation, I, I sometimes I feel like shame that, come on, this guy's a German. He knows uh, football. 
way more than I do. I mean, I try. I pride myself as being one of the guys on the inside. I mean, I played in this league. What, what else do I need to do? But long and short, when I listen to him, I get schooled. I get educated. I get informed. And I mean, I'm a sucker for people who can teach me and make me uh, know better. And uh, thanks for the conversation with you, Bello Zach, because again, he opened up my my eyes to something that I would love to, him to explain in the comment section that a company in Switzerland reached out to him to, to mine data for, for the league in, I think in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, and they were willing to pay 30K per game. Now, just imagine if that was working maybe across the Nigerian league and every match day, you know, every center, somebody's as currently that, that money will be like 100, 150 or 200 or 250K per game. And you see the number of people that will be earning more money. Again, like I always say, if it's not making money, it's not making sense. If the league have this type of opportunities that makes people make money, there'll be more love. Limano Sebastian now, for instance, you know, started from this table and today is a commentator in the league. No matter what you say about the league, it will tell you that this league is better than any league in the world. You know why? He gets paid doing that. And that's just one. The guys who are holding cable, holding cameras for the for the broadcast of the league. You, you can't tell them that the EPL is better than the Nigerian League right now because they earn money from it. It's making, it's paying their bills in this harsh economic reality. So those are some of the things that we must look at. I'm not saying that, oh, do not support the clubs that you support across Europe. Obviously do that by all means. But at the same time, try and understand that we all collectively owe it a duty and a responsibility to develop our own. And the best way we can do it, we can reach out to thank you very much for the 10 pounds that you sent across we can reach out to people like mario Liu. like i told the, the the organizers of the league there are some things we must admit that we don't know how to do there are some certain areas we say we know sabi this one who, who's the best in the industry in the words of uh, the magic johnson he said that when he wanted to step up into management he starts living of those people who were not the best around him he got the best lawyer the best agent the best manager the best business person and that put him where he belongs, okay? So if we want our league to be the best, we must go to people like Mario Leo and say, Mario, come, there are some things you know here. Our players don't look the part. They don't look like professional footballers. That's why people don't take them serious. We want you to take maybe a group of players, maybe 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and make a model out of them from your own experience. I mean, if you work with people like Lewandowski, uh, Ike Gondogan, uh, um, um, Mesut Ozil, and the rest, then you must know one or two things to do here. And while you're doing it for them, please take some Nigerians, young ones who are interested and hone their skills, polish them, make them get better, okay? And from that place, they will become uh, the ones that will midwife and give birth to the next generation of good uh, branded players across the Nigerian League. To be very honest, sometimes when I see Nigerian League players, I feel very bad. Like, this one does not require big salaries. I... I, I I, you know, back in the day, I used to talk about Nigerian journalists appearing like people who are suffering. And people said I was bad mouthing them. Today, when I see a lot of Nigerian journalists go for matches, come out in the stadium, I, I feel very proud to call them like Mike the Pondi, Felix uh, the Great, Emmanuel Sebastian, Emmanuel A team, and uh, the girls too. You know, you know, it, it's not like the economic hardship is not there. Uh, Timothy Dane, but those guys, when they, when they turn up, you know, okay, yes, these guys are turning up you would ordinarily respect them. They don't come out looking like uh, the old armpits have sweat. They come next to you. They are smelling. And this used to happen. I mean, remember, I played this, this league in the 90s. I managed a club. I used to own a club. I've seen it all. But today, it's getting better. And I wish that we could have the same with our players. Remember when I used to say that our coaches wear bib and they dress like fishermen? Uh, John Obu was one of those ones who kept reporting me that I was insulting him. But today, our coaches also look better. They could see improve. Again, now the one who's getting on the nerves of everybody is uh, Coach Mondo Digi. We're going to treat his case. He would uh, eventually learn how to talk. Because, again, this is our league. It doesn't matter whether you're playing in it or not. It's our league, and we must fight against anything that, that depreciates the value, uh, that keeps it down and keeps suffering. We're, we're not going to let that happen. And it's a collective. And if we see anything or anybody that can add value to it, we must direct them into the system. Um, uh, uh, Bello Zach, if you're there, it would be nice if you just in the comment section explain what you said on Twitter about you know a data company reaching out to you in Switzerland and how it went. I, I mean, I would like to really 
want us to, to talk about it and learn from it. It doesn't matter. Forget about the number of people that are viewing. See, when you put quality out, eventually people will get to see it and it will matter a lot. I used to wor worry about, oh, there are no 101 million th thousands of people watching. No, when we're doing banter, you see those kind of people because, again, that's the kind of audience that the Nigerian sporting media have built in the last 20 years. So when you're going to have educated conversation like this, it's always very difficult for them to get involved. But then let's go to Joss, uh, where one of the most amazingly beautiful lady who talks sports in Nigeria is, and she does it very, very well for Joy FM. And then at the same time, she's a lover and fan of Plato United. Anything that has to do with Plato United, Rairam Zamora, you know, can go the whole nine years of Plato United. She loves them so much, but she's as objective as they come. And I remember when I produced the league last season, I was in just for like three occasions. And, you know, I, I just listened to her talk and I was like, wow. If I ever had the chance, and I'd still think I would ever, I would get that funding eventually where we would uh, do camp reports, she would be my anchor person for the Just Center. So, all the way from Just, let's hear Rairam Zamora. Well, I think um, in today's game between Plateau United and Shooting Stars, first off, I have to give Coach Bengal Gumbute his flowers for executing the game plan that he had in mind and in fact it looked like he came to win the game today and unfortunately his boys were not very clinical in front of goal and they could not you know take advantage of their chances but they created lots of them they were able to match plateau united and break go on counters and keeping christian on the bench using his experience later in the second half showed that he was really ready for this game and they played really well today. So um, it's, you know, congratulations to Coach Benga for getting a vital away point here in Joss. On the flip side, it's a sad one for Plaza United. The 100% home record has been broken already with this draw. But it's not coming on a surprising note. I mean, 3SC know how to play Plaza United. The last time it was the 3-3 draw here in Joss. This time it was goalless. So... Um, Plato United uh, didn't look like they were ready for the game today from the beginning of the game maybe until towards the end the substitutions weren't timely and um, you could see it in um, you know after the end of the game the fans were really angry especially at the coach for some substitutions and the calls he made during the game for me I think that um, Plato United weren't in their A game today Akubo Adams was off um, Albert Hillary, unfortunately, was not in the game till the end. Um, they could not convert that penalty. Still on Yakuba at the same time, but I have to give it up to the goalkeeper, Oba, for that wonderful save there. At least he kept his team in the game. And then um, Nero Silas, he was also a threat to defenders as usual, but he didn't get enough space to do that playing behind Albert. And so he was weren't really seeing the best of him today, but he still did what he could. And um, on my opinion, I think that there were players on the bench that could have gone into that game immediately. Uh, the second half resumed like um, Sunday Anthony, Izuchiko Chimezio and... Um, David Onovo, these are players that could have, you know, brought more attacking progress to Plato United and uh, possibly help them in terms of the goals they were looking for in the encounter today, but they couldn't do that. The defence looked like it was shaky at some point because Jacobo was not in the game, of course, so he left the midfield really open. Uh, Sam Pam was, today was not his game completely at all. Mohamed Umar, who looked like he was the one holding the midfield, at least in the absence of um, Jacobo and Pam's lack of understanding the game, he was now sobbed on at a time when it didn't look like he needed to get off the pitch for Plateau United. But the chance now to get back on the top of the log is um, maybe far-fetched. They will have to go back and, um, you know, look back at their mistakes, make corrections and hopefully um, correct them in the next game against Heartland this midweek. Thank you very much, uh, Rairam Zamora. You could uh, feel the pain and the heart, the... You know, the emotions from the report, if you go back to yesterday where she was full energy, talking about what they would do, it's different. And uh, this is coming from M Mario Liu. 
uh, who's sharing something, say thanks for having me. Uh, on the line this there will in a new book be published soon. And this is it, the discourse in sports communication in Africa and the African diaspora. Uh, that's the, the headline. If I were you, I would pre-book this, pre-order this book. I will plan for it. There's a whole lot already. The table of content for this book is the introduction concept. Uh, uh, Wana Samuel Akman, uh, part one, football in Africa, you know, a whole lot on it. If I, I mean, I, I will prepare for this. This is the kind of things that I like to buy. And I've always said that most of the failings of African or Nigerian football is in the hands of the media. And every time I say this thing, people say, oh, that's why. It's in the hands of the media because, first off, the media decided, whether you like it or not, the biggest media, and I was uh, part of one for 13 years, so I know. We decided long time to focus our energy on European football. People say he pays the bill. I agree that he pays the bill, but we are the one who shove it down the throat and the ears of the audience. So if we also decided that we wanted to shove down the throat of the audience, the Nigerian League, they would have taken it because we had the power. We hold the microphones and we control what they listen. Remember what drove me into media, that sentence. Whoever controls information controls the balance of power. We would have been able to do that. Now we now realize our mistake. Again, we're still not doing the same thing. Thank God for the freelancers. That's why people like uh, Ryram Zamora, people like uh, uh, Felix the Great and Toby Adekwaju, I would not agree with him on everything, but I would always respect the man because of the kind of hard work that he puts in. All our Likodri, Puja, and the rest of them. Some of these guys, are, I don't agree with them. You know, sometimes we don't even relate. We don't say eye to eye. But I've got to respect the work that they do because what they do is the reason why we still have a semblance of football. You see, when they when you see them fighting against people like Omar, Katuba, and, and the others who say, oh, the Nigerian League is shit, the Nigerian League is not good, I understand what they're saying. Last season, for instance, apart from producing the league, I spent 11.8 million of my own money that's meant to be profit in trying to create a content call around the MPFL. And we're putting it out there... And then we'll put something very, very mundane and useless. You say 14,000 views, 10,000 views. And then you put that whole content that you work very hard for. And you see the fans give you like 700, 300, 110 views. And you'll be like, okay, so you guys don't like this your own. And you see, it's the reaction of the fans that determine how you bring in content. Okay? Because again... When the content is not getting proper views, your algorithm, it affects the algorithm, it affects your SEO, it affects your channel. And because you sit down that you want to do good, doesn't necessarily mean that your business should die. So sometimes it is hard. But, I mean, we're going to find a way around it. I've enjoyed myself today. I don't know about you guys. But let me come to the comment section now so that it doesn't look like uh, I'm not uh, even thinking about you guys in the first place. Tosin Limade was the first to be on the show today. He said, I'm first to like it. Thank you very much. Promise, uh, Ayawa said... Uh, I am second. And then Belozak says, uh, hi, uh, Belozak. Yeah, thank you very much for joining. And then Marilio was here talking. Felix the Great, say, bros, you don't enter. Yes, uh, uh, Matthias Abba Jacob says, uh, glad to be here tonight. Good evening, guys. Ola Tunji Imano say, I love this discussion every day. Not be about banter. Some days are for education, which a few sports channels offer. Thanks, boss. I love the guest and uh, I'm learning a lot. L listen, I I'm not saying it because it's on my show. But I think that if it comes to data and how it, it functions in sports, Mario Leo is probably the top guy, the top, the top man on the job to get it done. And is the one that I like to listen to because he understands it. He gets it. And when he speaks, I mean, I, I, I consider myself a student of his knowledge. And the only thing I can say, this is well-needed really, uh, discussion and they say, I remember you mentioned this in the past. Eloquence. Thank you very much. Tosi Limadi says, uh, we don't value data in Africa. Data helps with planning, monitoring, and evaluation of programs. Absolutely agree. Those are the key words. Data helps with planning. One of the reasons why I always say that Nigeria government cannot really plan and take care of its citizens is we don't really know how many we are. Okay, so let me, let me give you one. Let me show you one secret. When I was in terrestrial radio, there's this thing we, we erroneously always see. We have over 2 million listeners. And most times in the office, because me, and, and now I'm beginning to experience it from my kids, and sometimes get me pissed off, but I, I realize that this is who I am. Anything you tell me, you've got to prove it to me. <laughs> Don't just throw words or numbers in front of me, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's okay. No, I, I'm not like that. That's why 
you know, when people bring religion into conversation, I was like, my friend, shut up. I believe in God, but hey, shut up. Don't shove this in my face. Religion is not in the equation of nation building. Great leadership have nothing to do with religion, right? So when I say we have over 2 million people listening, I would say, where will I forget that number? Who do the counting? Because the, 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 the world over 2 million listeners, and we have the same people calling every day from Ikorodu, Mushi, Suleri, and maybe one from Aja, two and a half from Ikeja. I'm always wondering, like, two, do you know what 2 million listeners are on YouTube? I can tell you the numbers as it comes. The numbers don't lie. You, you can't fake it. You can't deceive anybody. So, I always, and, and that's the thing we not do with our football. We just assume. Oh, there are 200 million Nigerians who love football. Not lie. I know Nigerians who don't give a hoot about football. But you say there are 200 million Nigerians who love football. No, it's not true. If there are 200 million, if 200 million Nigerians love football and love Nigerian football, uh, we're not going to beg for money to do anything. No. The money will just come. English people love football. You know what it means to go to the stadium in winter? In winter, like there's so much into it that they would rather go to that stadium in that cold of the winter than stay at home. That's why the English English league doesn't have the Christmas, the winter break that every other league have. You think that uh, they, they don't they don't want to have the break. They want to, but the people who are back in the bus say, no, we would rather stay in that cold, watch the game, under the rain and shine and snow and everything. And so the league is structured to, to listen to the audience. I hope that we will get there one day. Uh, what's it called? I don't want to say, I can say, boss, we are here. Oh. Booker Shine Repair says... Uh, it's good to know this guy knows a lot about Nigerians and it's football. So Silly Madi say, make we try like the stream because Mariela say thanks for having me on the show. Thank you very much for being on the show. I, as a matter of fact, I should be thanking you for agreeing to come on the show. I mean, this is pretty late. I do want to say, I love the flow of Felix. Felix is, uh, but for me, I mean, I like listening to Felix. He doesn't know that I'm his fan. Um, sometimes I try not to say, but I'm his fan. Like, I love his knowledge of the league and then one of the things that i like about people that i listen to is how they use words um and sometimes it's what gets me when you when you know how to transition what the fluidity the nuance uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a music person i love music and what i like about music whether it is rap whether it's reggae whether it's r&b whether it's country any genre of music is the cadence of the music you've got to be saying something and you've got to be transitioning from so let me give you a song for this. I don't know how to sing. That's the funny thing. I, I like music a lot, but music doesn't love me. Uh, there is a song. Uh, there's a song. There's a lyrics from uh, Waiting to Excel. Uh, the the soundtrack. Say, what good is a house when it's not a home? What good is the tears when there's no one to wipe it off? Like, that That gets me completely. If you listen to rap from maybe Jay-Z or Tupac or Biggie or Raheem or Nas, you see the cadence. And Felix, Felix does have that kind of artistic cadence in his usage of words. See the way he was describing the games and then when he talked about uh, the coach of Bendel Insurance. You want to listen to him. You want him like, oh, that, this, this report should do then. It should go for like 15 minutes and keep it going. That's the kind of guy that I want to listen to all the time. So well done, uh, Felix, for that. Uh, Olatunji Emanuel say, I love the reporter's voice. Very clear in his words and great energy. It's that energy again. That energy just, just gets me anyway. Tosin Limadi say thanks for the gift. Uh, that's my brother anyway. So uh, thank you very much for supporting uh, my business. Um, it's, it's great to know that uh, families support uh, you when you're doing whatever you do. Normally, the least set of people who will support you are your family people. Like, oh, come on, this one, this one, I know. I have my friend who has said that, you're not serious. You know, I, I don't know if you guys ever ever been there, you know, but family, I bet go sit down, he just a joke, just play with the play. Uh, a lot of man say, but bros, I understand fans don't love this kind of conversation, but isn't it also the fault of the media companies? I feel like if they constantly educate Nigerians, they will know they have no choice but to listen. I agree with you 100%. I can't even argue about that one. Uh, the sporting media is our biggest problem in Nigeria. They, I mean, people people want quick fix. People want quick fix. So, uh, in Nigeria, I mean, do you know how many people still tell me that? Come on, go get airtime for one radio and then we'll listen to you more. It should be this YouTube. People still tell me that. Even when they, I've reached a place, it's like when people tell me to jackpot, like, oh boy, you are wasting your time here now. Your talent is needed abroad. Go and jackpot and go abroad. If you just go now, you just make money. I like it is not time for you to say, I, this guy not going to do one. It's like my, some of my friends still trying to tell me, just taste alcohol once. You're not a man no, because you don't drink alcohol. Like, okay. I don't know what you're saying, but 
keep saying it. Maybe one day your demon will tempt me and I'll try it. Or I'll try to smoke. Bellows actually, the company was a company collecting data for betting companies. So I go to the stadiums and I am usually in constant communication with my handler in their office. Uh, I give live updates to my handler for recording all through the match from the estimate number of fans to color of jersey to cards throwing who is attacking where they are attacking etc uh and then when they say i report on everything that happens 15 minutes before the game the, before the game starts till the end it's a bit more complicated than that but because of test constraint i can't break everything down here now what you've said is education enough if anybody doesn't get it I mean, my friend will say, if you cannot understand a music that is uh, put together for three, four, five minutes, my dear, nobody read book. You're not going to understand book. You know, like you listen to music and say, I don't understand anything to say. If you cannot understand that three minutes contest uh, of a life story, forget reading book. Your, your job is not to read book. Go and join police and be controlling, be a traffic order or something, Sha. but definitely you don't have any business being in the book space. So, Bello, believe me, what you have put there, this brain, I've assimilated it, articulated it properly, and I understand. Thank you very much. God bless you. And thanks for sharing your thoughts with, 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 with us on the show. Some days, uh, we don't need to banter. It doesn't matter. Liverpool have won the Carabao Cup, yes. Chelsea have lost six times. Chelsea become a record breaker by losing for the sixth time. Yeah, I mean, let it lie. Let it go. Tomorrow morning, we will talk about it. But right now... Uh, today is the day for education, and uh, we've got just nine more minutes to go on the show. Uh, Matthias Abba Jacob said, Edafe, what you are doing today is not for today alone, but for the future. Database is what we can't do without. Leo, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks again, uh, passing it on to Leo. Leo, thank you very much for being on the show. I mean, it takes a whole lot. Uh, Adewale Sakasi, IELTS will be easy for Felix who. He has a way with I did tell you. Felix is just a guy. When he makes up his mind to, to relocate abroad, any of the exams they give him, he, go, he does the A sample. But he has his way with words. And you know, the thing is, I've watched the young man evolve. It, it gives you joy when you watch people grow. I mean, he used to be a guy that, when I look at him, I say, this guy is stutter, shall. This guy is stutter with his words. But you could tell that there is something there. There is juice. There is, you know, like Abu Dhabi, when you watch Abu Dhabi play, you know that this guy is great talent. Just the injury wouldn't let him play football, but it was good. And 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 I'm not surprised what he's turned out to be. And the fact that he's found his voice on both spectrum. So I'm one of those who perfectly did it in English language and then in Pigeon English. It's not really as easy as people think. Pigeon English does not have too many positive adjectives. Most of the adjectives in Pigeon English are negatively inclined. So to talk sports at the pace we were talking about it, we were on my former place of work at that pace and do it with Pigeon English for that long, it takes a lot. So when I listen to uh, when I listen to Felix do Pigeon English with the MPF entry, I'll be like, wow, man, this guy is good. This guy, and he's an evil boy. So if he's from Warina, it's like it's different. If he's from Potakot or Benin, it's different. It's an evil boy, and he does it that well, man. It comes time to like, woo, you good, you good. You could give me a run for my, for my money my, in my in my in my 80s. Uh, you good, right? And that's why I always find a way to get him on my show. And well as I guess, okay, I think I've read that one. Uh, Matthias I say, uh, Doma United losing at home today. No, it was yesterday. Is a surprise to me. Canopilas teaching Sunshine Stars football today is the biggest news. And you know, Kennedy Bobe just came back. Kennedy Bobe, I mean, a former league winner went to Heartland. Chose Atland of a team. I, I, when, when he was going to Atland, I was asking myself, what, what does he really think he's going to go do? They don't have a field. A pitch is one of the worst ones. And then they're not well funded. Uh, they say tactics is good in football, but tactics is good when you have money to get the right players and the players are fit into your, your tactics. So when that didn't work, I was like, oh, I'm not sure this guy knows what he's going to do. But when they now removed him and brought the Christian guy, the, the coach back because of his political connection with the wife of the governor, my, my I mean, my first thought was, thank God for Kennedy Boboye. Kennedy Boboye just dodged the bullet. But then uh, in dodging that bullet, is gone to Sunshine Stars. Well, Sunshine Stars, I mean, this is his home club again. And the kind of advantage that um, the coach 
uh, of uh, Heartland got is the kind of advantage that he's got now. But my my worries, okay, when you look at the league table, uh, go to the league table and you look at it, and the first thing that crosses your mind is Sunshine Stars are just there in 17th position. There's a possibility that they will get relegated. Heartland are in 19th position. Brother man, what is the romance? You want to be one of the few coaches who've achieved winning the league and also getting a club relegated because I don't get it. Uh, why would Kennedy Boboye be a coach that is uh, attracting clubs in the lower echelons of the league? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we would, uh, we'll discuss that later. Eimba, for me, in fourth position, I've been the team of the season, the way they went from the beginning where they were on the on the, on the, on the floor and then how far they've come up. Also, kind of pillars, you know, from being relegated to getting promotion and everybody thought that they were not going to do well and getting there. But then the biggest failure this season for me would be the tech boys. I don't want them getting relegated. I think that uh, even though they are in 14th position, I think it would be bad for the league if they get relegated. So I want them to stay up. But if they don't keep their act together, then they get relegated. The problem with it is that I hear that they are building a new stadium. Not really, you know, there's a word that was used to describe the stadium, you know, this uh, collapsible stadium, whatever it is, that they are building. Imagine if they get relegated. It also means that that project, I don't know if that project will continue, but that would be terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that they shouldn't. And then there's a coach that I would love to suggest to any top team that is looking for a coach. I think that Dukudi is due to get back into the coaching gig. I mean, go back to the statistics of what he did with uh, uh, Ocean United, Sunshine Stars. Did he work with Real Monsters? Giwa, FC. And look at what he did at the time. I think he deserved to be given a chance, a shot at glory again. So we'll see how that goes eventually, if he eventually gets a, a, a coaching job anyway. But I think it's one to look at for. And then what I say, where can I get the reports of the league? Uh, Felix, I mean. Uh, Felix, if you follow them on TikTok, they are the MPFL Tori. The MPFL Tori. Uh, just search for MPFL Tori. Tori is T-O-R-I, right? You would get a lot of work that Felix does. And just search for him on Facebook, on Twitter, Felix the Great, you would see Felix the Great is Felix the A Great. Okay, Felix the Great. Uh, search for him. And Adewale Saka says that uh, you once did a poll if we were interested in the MPFL on YouTube, but I lost track of the result and way forward. The result was very poor. When I did that poll, and I think it was only five people who voted for the MPFL. Out of uh, the total vote was 114 people. Only five people voted uh, that they are interested in the MPFL. And sometimes those are the data that guides what you, you do. I, I really want to do... I, I think that it, it will be easier. And I was having a conversation with Kelechi, uh, Dr. Kelechi, that's always on the AFTV. And we've got a whole lot to talk. I've got a whole lot of people, people like Mario Liu, Liu and a lot of other people that I could call in. But I, I think now I could call myself an elder statesman I think that I'm more really concerned about the things that will build the league. Yes, I want my channel to grow, so I want to impress, you know, give a content that is interesting to my audience and make them feel good about what we're doing. But again, what would I tell my grandchildren? Would I complain to them? I don't think I have the right to complain. So when, when they say, so daddy, what did you do? Grandpa, what did you do? I'm going to tell them I just did nothing. <laughs> I don't know how that will be anyway. But, uh, I mean, we've come to the end of the show, so uh, we have to wait for 9 a.m. tomorrow morning to talk about other things. But, I mean, that's one of the things that always bother me. One of my greatest fears is, what will I tell my grandchildren? I mean, my children know that I'm doing my best, but my grandchildren, and if my kids are this smart, my grandchildren will be smarter. What will I tell them? They say, Daddy, so what did you do? What did you do to contribute? What am I going to say to them? Matthias Abba Jacob says, Ben Elishana's coach need to learn how to speak during and after the match. I think it will affect him in one way or the other. I think that the reason why uh, Mondo Digi talks like that, and I was telling a friend in Benin, I said, listen, it's because he's got his appointment, it's a political appointment, right? And he doesn't feel like he's answerable to anybody. Mondo Digi is being stupid. Let's call it what it is. I mean, I know that um, we're obligated to promote the league, but then it's the, the effort that too many people put in 
to get the league to where it is. The sacrifice, the whole things that people do to get the league to where it is right now. And you have a Mondo Dige. When he did the first one, I said, okay, let's overlook it. Maybe it's a one-off thing. And to tell me that, to answer the question first, to say, you don't consider a Yimba, a Ben Ali Shams as a Yimba a big game. Man, you're sick. You're sick. A nine-time champion playing against your team. Your team is one team that have, like, record that is very solid in the league. And you're playing. Every, first of every team playing against Ben Ali is a big game, right? But to say that you don't consider Ben Ali Shams as a Yimba a big game, man, you're sick. No matter what you say. And then the way you, you are attacking the journalists. None of the journalists went into the field to play. None of, you, you, I don't know why you're angry that anybody come out to play or didn't try to win the game. No. They came to get a draw. It will favor them to get a draw, to play at a draw. And that's what they did. If you have a tactics, get a tactics to get the ball off them and then punish them for that. So don't show up acting like uh, you are entitled. I, 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 don't, I don't like entitled people. And from the press conference, that's what I saw. I mean, the other time you, you said... Football is not about winning. It's about participation. Now, you didn't win today. You're, you're getting... You're getting... Like, that's very recalcitrant behavior. Like, I don't get it anyway. But let's move past that one. Felix the Great say, I am Felix the Great on all social media platforms. And yes, we've got a team doing work around the MPFL to re on uh, Twitter and TikTok. And believe me, guys, these guys do incredible work. I'm not a pressing guy. If you know me, I don't press people because I'm the hardest person to impress. You know, uh, come on. There's, there's, there's a whole lot in the industry that people do are like, so? There's nothing you there's nothing you bring to the party that I've not done before. I, tell, I told somebody that I worked for 13 years. I didn't go late one day for work. Do you know what that means? Like my mom, my mom died in the morning. I was in the studio in the afternoon. So you're not going to impress me. There's nothing you're going to do, okay? But when I say Felix and his team, Damn. Mm. Salute you guys. I don't want to say I shall follow. Felix Gracie, Odige Degba. I just wrote an article detailing all his attacks on media, referees, and even fans. Man, the man is just not doing well at all. And we've got to call it what it is because, again, if we keep condoning this, the day somebody has done something similar and they sanction it, then the reference point will be, when Odige did it, how come you did not do anything? So we also have got to speak. There, is, there are times when you say, okay, this is just a one-off behavior. Let's tolerate it. But when it becomes a, a regular, this is not your habit, we've got to show you that in the league, this habit is not acceptable. And, you know, one of the things that I don't like is when you attack journalists, it pisses me off completely. You know why it pisses me off. Let me tell you why it pisses me off. Especially in Nigeria. Majority of the people, and you as a coach, you can't tell me you don't know. 85%, let me not say 100%, now, 85% of the journalists who go to cover league do it out of their home. Sometimes how they do it, I don't know. Like, traveling around Nigeria, to cover football in Nigeria, it's healthic. It is crazy, ridiculously difficult. It is easier to travel around Europe. For instance, I travel from Portugal to Paris. 50 euros was the flight ticket. So let's hypothetically say 50,000 naira, right? That will not take me within Nigeria to travel from, say, I'm going from Lagos to Ibadan. 50,000 naira will not do. If I want to spend the night, hotel accommodation will be between 25, 30 to 40,000 naira. How much? Let's even say I take a train. The train first class is 9,000. Oh, okay. Let's me say I'm in business class. I don't even want to be in first class. Business class is 6,000 naira. By the time I get to the train station in Laduka Kitula uh, train station, I will not have to take uh, uh, Umiadio. When I get to Umiadio, I will not have to take either Okada or Keke to wherever I'm going to. Let's say. Um, Adama Sigma, so what's close? I'm going to stay at uh, Leo Leo Estate. The hotels there are 40, 50, and the rest. So think about all of that for a minute. And then these guys go cover matches, come back, the risk on the road, the unsafe environment. And then because they put a microphone in your front, try to make it important. Because again, I always say that you should consider it an honor that it like when I go to interview people and they, they try and give me attitude, I first tell them, Hey, guy. I'm trying to make you shine here. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't bring this thing to me. Don't you, go back and check me out. Look at the see, look at my on my CV. Look at the people that I have fought to stand still. They were the one they called the moving train. I fought him, he knelt down in front of me in ICPC's office to say I should leave him. That he's old enough to be my grandfather. Uh Obaseki. 
Barry Boti, Davis, you know, me before we became father and son, uh, Undu Karabo. So, she would be cool. I'm as you my guy. We all, so if I've go for this, don't, don't give me the attitude though, because if you give me, you go hear from me. Even when I had bosses that you people could call and threaten my job, I know they shake you. Not be now, we, I'm the boss, I'm the guy, I'm the cam boss, I'm the guy at the top. So, I always make them know that. So when you step out of the line, I'm like, okay, you uh, you ask for this one. Oh. I go first politely tell them. I said, this is the way you do. So you ask for Ramo. Oh. You just say if you bear him. <laughs> because I would do video, short ones, long ones. You know, I would analyze you every single day. I will haunt you in your sleep. You go see me for your sleep. Oh. You go and ask people before you. So so sometimes they, they, they kind of like take it easy. But I also don't like it when they do it to other people. But DJ's action was, come on, that's that's ridiculous why well, better say greetings from usa brother you are doing a good job thank you very much i don't want say god bless the journalists who are doing the job for the great say the odg behavior is just a reflection of uh, the bigger picture the football organizers in the league don't read the media a league that does not make uh pre and post match conference mandatory i think that's again that's another fight that i want to fight this who oh, when i produce the league so I was talking to GTI people and the MPFL people. They said, it doesn't matter. I said, no, it matters. When I go, uh, when I go for it, because again, when I go there and they say, go, you're the one that is doing this place. I tell them the things that I want before I go there. And I also tell them that, look, when I go there, because I remember my first game in Jaws, uh, I noticed that there was a horde of journalists trying to get in on the interview. And I said, no, this can not continue. First off, I spoke to all the journalists politely. Like, guys, this is for TV. Let's do what we want to do. And then I will make sure the coach stays here, wait for you, and answer your questions. Because, again, I also understand the demands. I was in radio before. I know how it is where you don't bring in the big stories, you could lose your salary. So I will make sure they stay. But for TV sake, so that we don't look like some nuisance, please stay away. And then we'll do the TV court. And then we'll bring them in. I say, hey, coach, wait. I, I kept Finidi waiting for a very long time. I said, Finidi, come on. If everybody's going to walk out, I'm not you now. Now yeah, you will come too far. Right, and Benga Gubote, I think I remember uh, Benga Gubote, even this Monday, DG, I went to him in the morning, you know, in his camp, and I told him, Coach, I yes, say your head they hot to you know, they like the post match for TV sake. Because if you not do, <laughs> if you not do, it not go easy. Oh, now, government, governor, deputy governor, go fight on your behalf. Oh, because uh, if not, they all this hot headedness, now this thing be need a bomb you. So we, we kind of like had an agreement. And then there are some you just need to have to like respect for their longevity in the league, the hard work that they put in. Someone like Benga Ogoboto, you have to go and like relate to him. Even though when we went to him, I know there's something he did that pissed me off completely. And I'm, I'm looking at it like, Benga, you're my guy. You're, you're messing my producer up. But hey, it's one of those things that happen on, in the line of the job. It doesn't make me hate him. It doesn't make me get angry with him. But I just didn't like what he did on the day. You know, just let it pass. So sometimes we have to have that conversation. And again, to the media, this is what I need to say to you guys. No matter how it is, some things make it official. What do I mean by that? When this type of things happen, write an official letter to the league. It doesn't matter. That conclusion that they're not going to read them, they're not going to respond. No, it doesn't matter. Make an official complaint to the league. Make an official complaint to GTI. Make it open. When you make that complaint, also put it in the public view. You know why it is like that? Posterity will judge. Okay? And it doesn't have to be a group of journalists. If you are there, like if I was in that interview, the two times that Dodigi have done this, if I'm there, I'll make an official open letter. You trust me now. I like official things. I'll write to the league. I will copy Alec Beleye. I will copy Bendel Insurance. I will copy the deputy governor, even the state governor himself. I will copy GTI. I'll copy the sponsors, the, the, the broadcast partners. Because... When I go start, nobody now comes and tell me, oh, you are trying to destroy the league that we're all building. There's nobody. I built the league too. I put I put sweat and blood on it. What this man is doing, if, he's, if it is condoned, you don't see it as bad, then let me show him the side that I can do, that I can that, be that nasty. I'm not the one who believe in turning the other shit because one of me, I'm one of those people who don't believe in every scripture in the Bible. I believe that there is God. I believe in the Almighty, the Divinity, the Trinity and all that. But I think the Bible was, was a document made to enslave black people. So I hardly believe everything that is written in it. I'm not one person who would ever turn the other cheek. You know, whatever happened.
No, 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 no. If turning the other cheek is a good thing, Jesus for not shout, Eli, 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 Lamata Batani for cross. If we just turn the other cheek on the start, see, this is the way it is. So, I never buy into that crap at all. So, if Bonne Dige have the free reign to do this nonsense that he's doing, S. Yogane Edafi, Matthew, have the free reign to attack fire with fire. And Mondo Dige, you will have it. Uh, it's coming. Just that uh, I'm preparing to go to Ghana next week for the All-African Games. So my focus is this way. I'm looking for money, right? Sponsors are, are pulling the, uh, the plug on me, so it's affecting the way I think. So my focus is on one side. Let me just try and achieve this because I promised members of my crew and some external members that I was going to take them to the All-African Games. Let me achieve that promise. And almost everybody who promise, oh, I will send you this, uh, I'll send you $2,000, I'll send you $3,000. Some are not picking their calls again. So when I'm done, I'm oh, Odige, I would, uh, uh, Felix, I'm going to beg you guys to keep some of these videos where the coach is ranting. We would revisit that conversation. When Odige will calm down. You know, with the senators, if I need to talk to journalists, we, since that time after, I want to say them again. When I did that video, and I said, but they call me, ah, the man will deal with you. I said, deal with me. I don't understand how and I just the overestimate some people, they underestimate some people. I worry boy you. He just said that man go fi carry the, the, the basket of ants when he want to put inside the block also. He just said go fi carry up. But it didn't, it didn't happen. If you're fighting on the side of rights, the side, fighting on the side of righteousness, if you've ever read the book, Ridge of Angels, if you're fighting on the, on the side of a just cause, eh, it's hard to be afraid. It is when you're doing wrong, then you might get a problem. But when you're doing right, it's hard to be afraid. And I think that Mondeliga have reached the stage where we need to fight against him and make him understand that no, this is not this is not the right way. You can't complain, you can rant. There are ways to go about it, but attacking the people who are the least of your problem, and then at the same time, I've never seen Mondeliga complain that he won a game because your position was robbed. And you know that's where you know that there's a problem. You can't tell me that uh, Bernard Insurance have not played game where officiating favored them. Okay, no, come on, now. come on, uh, let's have about self. Uh, Felix Degre say a proper match day uh, start from the pre-match conference on Friday. Give TV and radio something to talk about in the build-up to the game. This uh, ruled still far, but uh, we go reach there. Someday. No, definitely we will get there. I, I, hey, Felix, take my word for it. We will get there. We will get there. And the only thing I can say we shall get there. Matthias Abba says, uh, Felix the Great, well done for all your efforts in the league. I've been following you for long. Matthias Jack Jacob went on to say, Daffy, thank you for the work you are doing. Thank you very much. And guys, uh, extra 12 minutes have been added to the show because we're talking about Mondo Dige. Tomorrow morning is another time. Or so, so later this morning, sorry, it's 12 15, 12 13 already. Uh, in the morning, we would be again at 9 a.m. I think uh, by that time, I would have uh. Chana Cheru, you know, gloat about how Liverpool are the wonderful team now since they won, won that Calabar Cup. So we'll talk about that and a few other things to, to go with it. Chelsea, I said hello to now. Since that, uh, now, uh, Popo record and I wanted to set. So, Mona, continue. I also could relegate, come after for the league now. Mona will not say when I go win championship, you could do better. But whatever it is, my name is Idafi Matthew S. Yogane. I want to say massive thank you to Marilio and to everyone who was part of the show. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Beluzak, for sharing your experience. It's teaching. Uh, you might not know how important it is, but it is important to me. Thank you very much and God bless you. For every other person who joined in on the show, those of you who like the show, those of you who viewed, thank you very much. God bless you and have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, Felix the say, Aquarian man with the rant today. Uh, we not go hear what Matthias Abba say, have a wonderful night rest, everyone. Thank you very much and bye-bye.